Hi, and welcome to the 2018 uh, paper two. Leave us our order level. We're on question nine, the last question of the paper. So as usual, I'd say, uh, suggest you just pause the video or try the question, and I'll try to leave time between each just for the pause. Uh, if you want the cell notes I'm working off, uh, it might be great to have them in front of you. Uh, just email me at shanetroy at gmail.com, and the email address is in the description below. So question nine here, okay, has part A, part one, Find the volume of a solid sphere of radius 0.3 centimeters. Give your answer in centimeter cubed. Correct the three decimal places. Now I put in this screen grab of the formulas in the math tables. So just be familiar where they are. Okay. Um, now the volume here of a solid sphere. So sphere is the important thing. Volume is the important thing. So straight away, it's this formula here. So you write that out. Okay. Put something into it correctly and you have an attempt mark. Okay, um, now part one, two, and three here are marked together. Okay, so just be aware of that. Actually, I'm not sorry, three different parts. So five marks for just doing that. So that's great. We'll go to the answer here. So the volume of sphere is the formula. Uh, put the number 0.3 in here. I can put the whole thing through the calculator. I got this big long decimal here, 0.113097. It says it's around three decimal places. So I look at my fourth decimal place. It's not going to affect the number uh, before it. So it stays at three. Now that's part one. Now part two here says, the sphere is made of pure gold. Each centimeter cubed of pure gold weighs 19.3 grams. Find the number of grams of pure gold in the sphere and correct for two, two different places. Okay, so let's presume that's the sphere. Okay, and it has a certain volume. You're told that one centimeter cubed has 19.3 grams. So what would point was it, one one three? It would be less than nineteen point three. It would be the answer. So you'd be looking for a number smaller than that. I've uh, worked it out here in the next page. So I've written out the conversion factor: one cm cubed equals nineteen point three. Now to convert the conversion factor, this is how I do it anyway. Multiply both sides by what you're converting. Okay. So I'm trying to convert one into point one one three. So multiply that by one. If you do it to one side of an equation, you must do it to the other. So your answer is this. Okay, it's a matter of working it out. So 0 0.11 centimeter cubed is equal to 2.1809 grams. Round to the two decimal places. The zero here uh, won't affect the eight. So it stays at 2.18 and the units of grams. Okay, so if we go back here now again. So part three, it says, it is known that there are approximately 6.02 by 10 to the power of 23 atoms. That's Avogadro's number in chemistry. That's the number of particles in um, a mole of something in a certain amount of, of different substances. So in, in there's approximately 6.02 by 10 to the power of 23 atoms in 197 grams of pure gold. Basically, if, you, if you're into chemistry, that's a mole of gold. Find the number of atoms of pure gold in the sphere we're talking about, okay, which is much less than that, it's 2.18 grams. Okay, so our answers will be smaller than this. Now that's a huge gargantuan number, okay. Um, but we can deal with it, okay. The calculator can handle the, the calculation. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to figure out what to do. Okay, so again, we have a statement here. They're equal. So what's the answer here to show you that? Okay, so 197 grams equals the 6.02 by 10 to 23 atoms. So let's figure out what does one gram equal? So if I divide both sides by 197, so 197 divided by 197 is one. We get that. And I've left this calculation undone. I can do that later on, okay? Now, that's, I'm gonna keep, that's a number. So let's keep them, I'm gonna use it later on. So if one gram equals that, well then 2.18 grams is 2.18 by both sides of the equation. So 2.18 by one is itself, and 2.18 by this number, okay, now is the time to use the calculator, and it comes out for me at 6.7 by 10 to the power of 21. I think there was actually a longer number here, but you're asked to round the two significant figures, okay, not decimal places, okay, so the, the number here, six, is significant, and so is the seven. Okay, the next number you can drop off. So if there's two decimal places, you have two numbers after the decimal point. The significant figures, you have just two digits. Okay, and everything else gets uh, like rounded up or down. Okay, so that's question nine, part A. Now part B here says, a survey was carried out on behalf of a television, television station to investigate the popularity of a certain show. Now part one here says, a random sample of 1,560 television viewers was surveyed. Find the margin of error of the survey 
and give your answer as a percentage correct to one decimal place. Okay, so that's your total number. Now, the formula for margin of error isn't given in the math tables, so you have to memorize it. Okay, and it's coming up a lot more recently. Uh, statistics and probability are very, very important. So they're more than likely going to keep asking these kind of questions. So that's the formula there, 1 divided by the square root of n. Okay, so as you're, the smaller the sample, the larger the margin of error. Okay, so we're dividing 1 divided by the square root of 1560. I came out with 0 0.0253, whatever. And it says it wants it as a percentage. Okay, so a percentage is times 100. So I'm going to play that decimal by 100. I came out with, uh, when you rounded it to one decimal place, 2.5%. So there's 2.5% above or below um, is, you, you're, that, that could actually be your answer. It's the margin of error. Okay. So go back one. Now in part two, it says in the survey, 546 of the 1,560 viewers surveyed said that they liked the show. Use your answer to part B1 to create a 95% confidence interval for the percentage of viewers who like the show. Okay, so when you have your standard distribution, okay, something like that, you have your, you know, your middle group, okay, that's something like 65%. If your larger group here, okay, that everybody in there is the 95%. Okay, so who are the, what's what's outside that? Okay, now, should that here, that's kind of shown here, but this diagram is better than my attempt, okay? So first I'm gonna do is find out what percentage of people like the show. So 546 divided by the total gives me 0.35, multiply that by 100 to get 25%. So 25% of people like the show, but the margin of error, we're gonna account for that, okay? Um, it's it's gonna be 2.5% above 35, or 2.5% below. So I take the numbers plus and minus, okay, you can, you can write like this, there's different ways of notating it. This is fine, as long as you show the answer, okay? And that's the job done. So somewhere between 22.5% and 27.5% people like the show. And we're, 90, we're, we're fairly sure that that's the correct answer, okay? Now 99% confidence interval is just, it's a different, it's even more sure, okay? Now, part three here says, an executive for the television station had claimed that 40% of viewers liked the show. Use your answer to part B2 above to conduct a hypothesis test at the 5% level of confidence or significance to test the executive's claim. You have to state your null hypothesis, your alternate hypothesis, and give your conclusion in the context of the question. Now, these are hard, okay? I find this not for, you know, something getting better at but I'm practicing, but it can be very challenging. So the first thing we're going to do here is, okay, let's write down our null hypothesis, okay? And that is that, what the executive saying is that 40% of people like the show. Now, our alternative is that 40% of people don't like the show. So from our interval from before, we know that between 22.5% and 27.5% of people like the show, okay? Your 4% is not within that range, so therefore the null hypothesis is not correct. So we reject it. Okay, this is the language they want. What does that mean? It means that the percentage of viewers who do not like the show is not equal to 40%, it's different than 40%. Okay, and that's that. Okay, so it's very tricky. I would say, look, these have come up on paper two for the last three years, maybe even four years, and it's going to come up again. I almost imagine it would be in every single year. So with that knowledge, I would suggest you focus on this section and just get a good handle on even trying to get the attempts here, okay? Um, it was fairly hard, heavily marked. Um, it wanted to be very precise. So it, it is a challenging part. Anyway, that's question 9B part two, sorry, three, and that's the end of the paper, okay? So thanks for that and best of luck.